The following is an ESG On Location video. Welcome to the Next Next. That is the latest iteration of Nutanix's user event and partner event here in New Orleans, floats and all. This company over the years has been all about visibility and at ease when it comes to IT infrastructure. They started on the uh, HCI front, then it was private clouds and enterprise clouds and hybrid clouds. What's most interesting and what has been the focus for this year's event is not just to extend that visibility and ease on the infrastructure side of IT, but actually to begin to go beyond infrastructure further into the bounds of what's possible with IT. I'm going to hand over to my colleagues Mike Leone, Bob Liberté, for their take on the event. It's great to see Nutanix continuing to execute on their vision of driving simplicity across the entire IT environment. They've worked really hard to make the infrastructure invisible via Core HCI, and they'll continue to enhance that aspect of their solutions. But they're also looking to extend that one-click simplicity and that one OS mantra to support hybrid and multi-cloud environments. Now, of course, there's been a number of announcements uh, throughout the keynote, object storage support, uh, Kubernetes support, Flowbeam, and Era. On the database front, Nutanix announced ERA, a new PaaS offering that's looking to really extend their one-click mentality to simplify, streamline, and automate database provisioning and managing. And additionally, with this initial release, they'll look to provide some productivity and cost relief to managing database copies across organizations with a copy data management service. And the important takeaway is that they're committed to delivering on their vision of leveraging their IaaS roots and coming higher level to, to being a PaaS provider. I'm very interested in seeing how uh, some of these announcements start taking off with customers and, and especially around the database side of, of as they become more pervasive into the mission critical database workloads. Nutanix is focused on making IT invisible. What does that actually mean? Well, for Nutanix it's all about how do they reduce a complex IT environment and make it so that you can just perform your major functions with just a single mouse click. Now, they've been focused on doing this for the hyper-converged infrastructure, for complete data centers, and now they want to move that and include the invisible IT to include the cloud as well. That's not going to be easy, and so to help them do this and make this transition, they've acquired a few companies that will certainly help them get there. The first organization that they acquired was one called Minjar, and that's resulted in their first SaaS offering that they refer to as Beam. Now, Beam is built to go in and comb through the cloud environments and be able to provide a complete visibility of what you're using and where. And what this enables organizations to do is to really determine how to best cost optimize and also optimize for compliance, those cloud environments. So certainly something that will help organizations when they move to cloud and multi-cloud. And I could expect moving forward, you'll start to see Beam also incorporate what that would look like as compared to a Nutanix environment, either an enterprise cloud on premises or potentially even their SI offering in the cloud. The next offering that they're bringing to market is from a company called Netzil that they just acquired. Now, this is a digital native company that's focused on providing application performance management for cloud environments. So thinking about these highly complex container and microservices environments, they're able to provide visibility into those environments so you can effectively manage them. And again, it's not too much of a stretch to see how this type of technology could easily be integrated into their flow to easily set up micro-segmentation across these environments. So a lot of interesting acquisitions for them to help bolster their support for cloud environments. And if you're looking for additional information, please check them out on the Nutanix website. I talked in my introduction about this company growing up and certainly you can't knock anywhere with thousands of users and what 70,000 people or thereabouts on its user community. As we've heard from Bob and Mike in terms of the announcements and what we know of the history of Nutanix, so far this company has managed to be pretty good on both vision and execution. But going forward as we imagine what's next or consider what's next, it's going to have to deliver really well on both those things. If you think about it, execution is what pays the bills, 
and vision is what paves the way to the future. It's got to get that just right. It's almost like Goldilocks in a way. Not too much, not too little, get both things right. The biggest thing I think that it has in its favour right now is the other thing that Dheeraj talked about from the stage a lot, which is the trust that it has. That trust represents itself in two ways. It's all the people turning up here. It's the, if you like, the raving fans, both employees and customers that are around the company. And it's about the fact that what Nutanix is doing can bring personal benefit in terms of careers and so on, as well as IT and business benefit. That makes it a really interesting organization to watch.